Hmm. It's been an interesting first couple weeks for the Pac-12, let me tell you. I mean, you got Colorado blowing out A&M, but then the same Colorado team has lost some really bad games, which is weird. Very, very weird, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, you have the whole Pac-12 SWAC challenge thing in which the Pac-12 lost three games on the road. The SWAC teams, you have Oregon being 2-2 two and two now. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about Oregon in a moment as it is feast week in college basketball. It is feast week. And the feast begins with the Maui Invitational. But again, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so Pac-12 has got to get something going, you know. There, there are some opportunities here for some of these teams in these early season Feast Week tournaments. But right now, I don't see it. I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Things are not looking too good. Unfortunately, somebody else decided to mess some things up, you know. So the annual, you know, the annual round robin you know that New Mexico State New Mexico does um, one of those games got postponed somebody really thought bringing a weapon you know is the type of thing you need to do which is not the type of thing you need to do you should not be bringing um, those type of materials and now that game has been postponed um, who knows if that first leg will even be played at all Okay, so big thing again. Um, the Continental Tire made a bet. Virginia, they overcame the adversity. They win the main event. UCLA goes 0 and 2. Again, kind of kind of wishy washy that they went 0 and 2, but you know Baylor was able to beat them. Illinois was able to beat them. You know Virginia was able to somehow get by Baylor. And again, I've, I've talked about it last week. You know, again Virginia's offense has definitely improved and again the the adversity overcoming what happened you know and we don't have to discuss that again but that takes a lot takes a lot of courage takes a lot to overcome all that okay so the big the other big things you know you had Texas taking on Gonzaga and I don't know what in the world the Zags were doing against the three but they could not stop it Chris Beard, it looks like he finally has Texas rolling. Big win for the Horns. But then, on the flip side, Sunday, Gonzaga just decided to thump Kentucky like it was nobody's business. Like, they easily made Kentucky look foolish. And this is the same Kentucky team that basically got, you know, physically, you know, outran, you know, against Michigan State, you know, Oscar Sheepway came back in both these games, and you know, Michigan State, well, they couldn't stop him, they stopped everybody else. And Michigan State and Gonzaga picked up two big wins against Kentucky. There's also Kansas, they beat Duke, no built self, they beat Duke somehow. You know, I, I honestly didn't think, you know, the things are going to go Kansas' this way, but, you know, it did. Again, the talent for Kansas that came back has just been, you know, on another level. You know, but they came back and they did their thing. Okay, so, first things first, the, basically, there's the five in-season tournaments that are going to go through, um, this next Sunday that we're going to talk about, you know, that matter to me. Um, you know, you have the Maui Invitational. That's first up. That starts in about three hours or so. You have San Diego State in the field. They have a nice forward by the name of Jaden Ledee. Chris Holtman and the Buckeyes definitely looking to prove something there. Louisville is absolutely terrible. And, you know, Arkansas, you know, they don't have Nick Smith Jr., but Eric Musselman has been, you know, putting this Hawks team up for, you know, some good stuff. You know, Creighton and Texas Tech, they're going to be in a war again. 
two top 25 teams are going to be in a war. Both these teams are just really, really good. You know, Arizona, you know, Tommy Lloyd's, you know, got a nice roster set up. And they're going to take on Cincinnati to start. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, the battle for Atlantis, though. Um, Tennessee trying to figure out how they rebound after they got humiliated by Colorado. You know, do we get Dayton, Kansas again? It, it's it's a lot of questions that are going to come up from this. There's also USC, BYU in this field, Baylor, Butler, Wisconsin. Um, it, it's an interesting field, but I feel like we're going to get, you know, I, I feel like we're going to get something, you know, Dayton, Kansas related, because again, Dayton's pretty good. Dayton's pretty good. They lost the game, you know, earlier this um, last week, but Dayton's pretty good. So I hope we get another Dayton, Kansas clash in the battle for Atlanta's semis on Thanksgiving. You know, I think that might be a matchup possibility on Thanksgiving. There's also the ESPN Events Invitational, you know, which that looks very important. For Memphis because Penny Hardaway and company they need to you know they have they've got a good guy I'm gonna name it Kendrick Davis you know Seton Hall you know they, they play Seton Hall to start and all Amir Dawes and the transfer portal is on Seton Hall's side in this one you also have Stanford again again a Pac-12 team that needs no introduction on you know getting help because you know, this is an interesting team. Spencer Jones, Harrison Ingram, Michael Jones. You know, very, very fun team. You know, because Stanford's been interesting over the past couple of years. They just haven't been able to make any sort of, you know, bump in the Pac-12. There's also Oklahoma in this tournament. You know, you have Tanner Groves coming back. The transfer, Grant Sherfield. Again, going to be interesting again. Florida State is absolutely terrible. You know, they have no wins. They're going to start with Siena, though. And, I mean, that's going to be it's going to be interesting. You also have Nebraska and Ole Miss in this field. Uh, but I'm kind of eh on both of those teams at this moment. And, oh, boy, the Phil Knight legacy. Again, I'm still trying to figure out what Duke's plan is. Jeremy Roach leading the team. John Scher has to get these guys together. You know, Oregon State, another Pac-12 team that needs to get it together. You know, Gonzaga, again, while they aren't a complete lock to win it, you know, like I would have thought, you know, maybe last week, I would have thought that Gonzaga was more of a complete lock, but now not so much. You got Drew Timmy, also have Malachi Smith in there, and they get Portland State to start, so that's going to be interesting. You know, there's still Zach Eddy, he's still on Purdue. And he's got a tough challenge. You know, Bob Huggins and the Mountaineers are not going to be easy to start. And there's also Xavier. They're interesting. You know, Florida's got a first-year head coach, but Xavier's got Jack Nung, you know, Kobe Jones, Soli Baum, a trio that could do some damage. Definitely a veteran trio in the Phil Knight legacy. And then, you know, the Phil Knight Invitational, the other part of the PK-85, you, you you got North Carolina still trying to figure out where they are, you know, with their man, with Armando Baco and Pete Nance, you know, they they get Portland to start, so that's going to be interesting. You also got to watch out for Villanova, you know, no Gillespie anymore, but you have Eric Dixon, Caleb Daniels, two veteran guys. Then let's start against Iowa State. Oh boy, Iowa State. We all know it's a Big 12 team, so that's not going to be easy. And again, Izzo. <laughs> Izzo. And Michigan State. They take on Mark Sears in the Tide. And this Oregon team, you know, Kalel Ware. He's also an interesting, you know, prospect. A big seven foot man. But this is UConn. Oh, yeah, and, you know. UConn returned a lot of guys from last year, and they're going to need, you know, they're going to need something, you know. 
Oregon's going to need a big win. So the Pac-12, yeah, I think needs a couple of big wins in some of these early season tournaments that will help their resumes come March. And other teams like Gonzaga or North Carolina, you know, and then Duke, you know, those teams in Kansas as well, you know, they're going to they're going to get their wins in the conference play because you got teams like Loyola Marymount that's doing well. Um, you know, again, Texas is doing well. You know, Texas Tech is doing well. Baylor, yeah, yeah, they went one and one in, you know, um, the Continental is higher. But, you know, again, the Pac-12 struggled, has been struggling. Like, you know, UCLA went 0-2 and in the Continental is higher. So, and then the Pac-12, again, lost to three SWAC teams and just hasn't looked very good. Uh, the Big Ten right now, I, I could tell you, we, we got some interesting ones. You know, again, Michigan State definitely have, probably has the toughest schedule in the country, and they're looking to navigate that tough schedule with, you know, with another interesting, you know, slate in the PKI. Hmm. So I think we're going to have a good feast week. I think you know, a lot of basketball is going to be played. And a lot of basketball is going to be real fun. So I cannot wait for it all. Um, I'll be back in about mm, 12 hours. So 12 hours or so we'll be talking yet again about the NFL and how this week in the NFL was insane. Cannot wait. I'll see you in 12 hours. Take care.